Hello, everyone. Uh, this video is going out to our elementary staff, and it is uh, about our planning for the 2021-22 school year. And by this time of the school year, we typically have a lot more finished and in place for what the start of the school year next year will look like. Uh, but we still have 204 students who are in our e-learning program this year uh, in the third trimester, and we are still trying to gather information from families to figure out how many of those students will not be returning next year to our in-person instruction. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move forward with planning, even though we still need more information from our families. Dr. Winter's working on gathering that information. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're planning on offering an e-learning program because uh, even if 50 of those students uh, don't return to us and we don't have an elementary online option, uh, it's gonna be, um, not good for us as a school district and having those students go off to possibly a cyber charter school. So we're planning con to continue the program. We'll offer e-learning to students in grades two through five. Um, we're gonna have the need for two e-learning teachers to begin the school year. And since we only have uh, two teachers, they would be required to teach two grade levels, but we're gonna go over in this presentation a little bit about how we're gonna uh, cap the class sizes so that is more manageable and also a stipend that would go along with uh, taking on one of these positions. So one of the teachers uh, would teach second and third grade and the other teacher would teach grades four and five. We're not gonna offer uh, an e-learning option for kindergarten and first grade. Although our teachers did a fantastic job with that this year, we still feel very strongly philosophically that the best place for those uh, early learners, especially with literacy skills, is in a face-to-face -face instructional environment. So uh, our students who are currently in e-learning in grades one through four possibly could continue on a limited, with a limited number of them in e-learning next year uh, in grades two through five. Again, we're going to cap the class size uh, for the second and third graders and the fourth and fifth graders at a total of 26. That means for example, if we have 13 second graders, 13 third graders that say we're not ready to return for whatever reason for in person in 2021, 22, are you offering an online option? We have had parents reach out to us and ask that. Uh, and the answer is yes, we are planning to have an online option for students who aren't coming back in those grade levels. So it may not be clean in 13 and 13. It may be, you know, um, 12 and 14. You can do the math, but uh, we want to make it manageable numbers wise since there would you would be working with two different grade levels here's a sample schedule that doug worked on with one of our well actually a couple teachers who are doing e-learning right now and the sample schedules for a second and third but it would be similar for a fourth and fifth grade uh, combination as well so from 8 15 to 9 would be your first prep in the morning and then we do a, a synchronous ela instruction from 9 to 10 40. And then from 1040 to 1110 would be your synch synchronous science instruction. And then from 1110 to 1130, that 20 minute time period, that would be not necessarily direct instruction, Zooming with all the students, but it would be a time for some assessments. It would be a time for students who need extra help to meet with you um, <clears throat> or people you wanna check in on. And uh, you could structure that so that it, it's uh, not necessarily the same as the 9 to 1040 and the 1040 to 1110 type of, uh, of screen time. From 1130 to 12 would be lunch, and then you have a prep after that half hour lunch from 12 to 1. And then from 1 to 210 would be the synchronous uh, math instruction for the two grade levels, followed by third grade synchronous uh, social studies, 210 to 230, and then 230 to 250 would be the synchronous uh, social studies for the uh, second grade. So. Um, the way they have this planned out, it would be split for the writing instruction and uh, follow up with at 2.50 to 3.30, synchronous wrap up teacher help time. Again, very similar to that 11.10 to 11.30 time, not necessarily all screen time. Uh, we're trying to balance having the students engaged uh, throughout the day, but not necessarily on screen all the time. So, um, that's the sample schedule that Doug worked on again with some people who did this this year. 
and it obviously could be tweaked as long as uh, we feel it could work. We're open to talking about how that schedule would, would look uh, when it was finally put together. Planning time, uh, as I said, you know, when I went over the schedule, 8.15 to 9, and then again, after your, your lunch from 12 to 1, we're offering a stipend, uh, 500 per grade level per trimester. So if you're teaching two grade levels, let's say you're the second and third grade teacher for those 26 kids, and it might be less than 26, we don't know yet. We're still working on gathering information, but it won't be more than 26. Uh, if you're teaching those two grade levels, it would be $1,000 per trimester. If for some reason we get the responses back from the parents and there's more a need for more e-learning teachers, and the number of students who are coming back for in-person instruction decreases. And if we are able to pull another third teacher, um, then if you're only teaching one grade level, it would be $500 per trimester. But I think things would have to be aligned pretty, pretty good for that to happen, but it is a possibility. So for example, if there's three teachers in, let's say one grade level at one building, and there's a big draw for e-learning teachers from that grade level at that building, and if it allows us to go from three teachers to two, we could possibly have one of those teachers uh, bounce out and, and be the third e-learning teacher. So for example, if that happens, we might have a second grade e-learning teacher, a third grade e-learning teacher, and one for fourth and fifth combined. So hopefully that, that makes sense. Um, um, again, that's an outside chance, but we, did, we wanted to make you aware of, that's why we broke it down into 500 per grade level per trimester. Supports, you needed uh, um, certain kinds of support this year, and it was more challenging our first year in with students coming from multiple buildings and having multiple principals. Um, you know, your principal from your home school, but a student that went to a different school, uh, who was helping, how are they helping? So we wanted to try to, to shore that up a little bit. And you also had some students who um, weren't necessarily the best e-learning students, uh, they were more fitted more for in-person instruction uh, or they just didn't attend, which uh, was, a, was a problem as well. So we wanna make sure that we're taking attendance and to be counted for attendance each day, the student uh, needs to be on Zoom. And if they're not on Zoom, uh, then they're gonna be absent for that, for that period. Uh, teachers will use Zoom like it's a regular classroom. Uh, you're gonna have the students on Zoom, kind of like if you're doing small group and students are in the room working independently and, and if you need to say, hey, I need to see this student, you know, you need to bounce in from the independent work you're doing to get into the Zoom, uh, kind of like you do in the in-person face-to-face classroom. So we can work on that more um, as we get go through the summer. If attendance does become a concern, uh, we would refer the student to truancy. And if it becomes a, a big concern, we would say uh, this is not an option for you in the district. So uh, we would tell them they'd have to come back if they want to stay with Lowered Off and they have to stay, they have to come back to the face-to-face -face program at their home school. Uh, or if they refuse to do that, then we're going to tell them that um, the only other option for them is an outside cyber. So what we're going to do, again, going back to that support, is we're going to have all the students become Conewago Elementary students in the virtual uh, school. So if you're an e-learning student in any grade level, you would be a Conewago student. And um, you know we're gonna give the kids laptops um, and they have to have home internet access also to be a uh, part of this program. And since it, they will become Conewago students, not in person or face-to-face, -face, Dr. Wiesner will be the principal for all the e-learning students. And the teachers, you'll be provided a space at Conewago if that's what you prefer. Uh, it can be your home base for when you wanna come in. And if you wanna work at home uh, based on your schedule, certain days, uh, that, that's up to you. So we would give you a space, how often you use it, that's up to you. Uh, but again, you can work from home if the flexibility helps you. So in short, we're looking for two people who wanna help us uh, keep possibly 52 students from going to cyber charter school. And we're willing to uh, help with the scheduling of this. We're going to advertise the schedule I shared with you to parents because they need to know what they're signing up for. Um, we're also being flexible in where you do this work. Uh, is it at home? Is it at Conewago? Uh, we're also looking at the stipend of $500 per grade level per trimester. 
and we want to have uh, Dr. Wiesner be the, the go-to person for you when you are having uh, issues with either students or families so that you do have that person that you know you can go to for uh, support and aren't wondering who's going to help with this situation. So again, uh, short turnaround here because I would like to next week hopefully be able to identify who these people are that are going to fill these two roles. Um, and then the principals can then really start working on what happens with that ripple effect and how those buildings, if these two teachers come out of those buildings to do this, uh, what the staffing looks like at your building, because I know you want to know that and, you, and you, you need to know that. So again, unfortunately, this is still not a typical year where by this time we know these things and you know where you're at. Uh, we still need to plan for people not coming back for in-person instruction. So if you have questions, reach out to Doug, reach out to me, but we're asking you to do that before Wednesday, May 26th, so that we can get this all in place and then get everybody else set for the summer. Okay, thank you. And as always, please take care.